You're listening to a bonus episode of The Dairy Age, featuring Chagisk's weekly Let's Talk Dairy webinar series, which is also available as a podcast. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to uh, this week's episode of Let's Talk Dairy. We're going to hand over here, we're going to turn over now to Stephen. Uh, I know Stephen for many years. Stephen worked with us down in Park for many years. You're down there for Stephen. Uh, nine years, I think, George, yeah. You got away from the then about four or five yeah. years ago, was it? Just about, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, you didn't really get away from it, so you think you did. <laughs> we have long tentacles, we, we hold on to our own. So, Stephen, where are you farming? Uh, West Water, uh, Eglish, West Waterford, yeah, okay. in a relatively dry enough area, yeah. Might be a good, good old spot. And uh, farm with your dad, Richard, down there, isn't that it? Yeah, he's helping the father, and then the mother helps out, and Katrina then as well, she's helping out as well for the springtime, so yeah. Busy, busy farm in the spring. So, how many cows are you milking down there? So, will you milk uh, the summer? The, the plan for the summer is kind of 185 to milk. There's what there's seven left to calf and things like that. So we're kind of been creeping up cow numbers with the last few years. So I'd say we that's this is our kind of number we hope to kind of balance out it. And what's the size of the milking platform then, Stephen? You're raising on? Oh, it, 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 just small breaks we're going to know this year, but I'd say there's about 85 hectares of milking platform. So we're le- relatively lowly stocked on the milking platform and things like that. Like, and that's the way we kind of. We plan to stay kind of average, lowly stocked, and cut back on our, for our nitrogen use, maybe. Okay, but you're calling it lowly stocked, but you're still stocking account near enough account to the acre at the same that, time. Yeah, that, that's it exactly. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy. Easy enough managed. Yeah, it's all. It's all a kind of relative to the grass that's grown, and we're going to come back to that in a few weeks' time with a uh, talk about matching uh, grass to, to grazing. So, what kind of grass uh, yields are you, are you achieving on down there? I know you'd be, you'd be prone to drought down there too, wouldn't you? Yeah, last last oh, last autumn we got dry again, but I'd say we grew thirteen ton every year with the last kind of four or five years. So like okay. it's 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 able to grow it like, but like the soil indexes are fairly good too, and we're always kind of watching them. And it's easy, you know, it's easy to manage it. It's, it is growing, like you know. Okay. So besides the milking platform, there's an outlock as well, Stephen, isn't there? No, is it forty hectares? Yeah, <laughs> there, there are kind of two bits away, only two miles away, but. They, we use that for silage and heifers, and we rear some beef cattle then as well, just as kind of a, a hobby. I don't know. Well, it's, an, it's, a, it's a solid income there too. So overall, stocking rate around the livestock, two and a half livestock units a hectare across the whole. Yeah, yeah. 2.3, 2, 2.4 the whole farm average last year, yeah. yeah. So there's a substantial enough beef unit there as well. We'll come back to that in a minute, but we're going to talk about the beef and the side of the house. What kind of big solids did you sell last year, Stephen? Yeah, last year, <laughs> 498, I think, last year, which was slightly back in the last few years. Because mm. we we left cows on Wednesday up to into March last year, and I don't think they recovered properly. Not recovered, but we didn't get a massive peak out of them last year, so we, they, we lost a lot of milk early in the year. But like, and then the drought hit us in. But like, anywhere around five hundred, we'd be happy with like you no know, five twenty would be the kind of target. Five twenty five. On how much meal roughly ton? Eight hundred kilos, yeah. Seven fifty, eight hundred kilos, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so good, good, solid um, grass based farming going on there. I heard John there talking about the low proteins and in the milk and silage in the diet. What's the story of your farm now? How's that going? Uh, we, we were excellent all February, say, but then when the weather turned, we had to bring the cows back in, say, in, in and out and on off and everything like that. So the protein fell from 358 and we're kind of 336 and 338 at the moment. But there is a couple of kilos of silage in, in nearly every day, with, say two, three kilos and a small bit of fodder beet just when it's wet, but we're trying to get as much grass into them every day, which seems to be holding the protein at kind of 338 mark. So hopefully it holds. Does it bounce back quickly when you get grass full time again? Uh, it, it, it generally takes 10 days for a fortnight and it, it isn't as fast to go up as it comes down, unfortunately, like, you know, but it will, it will, it will go back up. It's in the cows, hopefully, so. Okay, okay. Tell us a bit about the calving season this spring. So you've only seven or eight left to calve. When did you start? Uh, first one was due the fifth or fifth of February, so the first one came along around first or second of February, mm-hmm. and it's been kind of going fairly hard up till Paddy's day, but it's very quiet now at the moment. So like, there's we had a good good first three or four weeks, which is great yeah. start. Yeah, start together in the evening and things like that, and we had a lot of milk in, Fe- in February in the start of March, which is great help. Like you know, are the many heifer calves in it? We used sex semen last year and it worked very well. So we had about 60 heifers. So we sold so we sold some surplus and we had a couple of sets of half twins and things like that. But we'll, the plan is to keep 42 um, heifer calves and then just and rear about 110 or 15 uh, beef calves. 
and sell whatever left and a few a small few Frisian bull calves and a few circus heifers. Were there many Frisian bulls for sale this year? Or have yeah, you had tur- tur- 13. 13 and, and 60 heifer calves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a couple of half twins in them as well, like so yeah, yeah. Oh, you must yeah. have um you must you, tell us about the sex semen then, just to move on just a little bit and come back to the composition of Mickey in a minute, or Mickey. But uh we'd let first you're really tr- trying it. Yeah. And so but what do we buy? Hundred hundred sex semen straws last year. Okay. Uh say so we had what we 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 AI'd, oh there was hundred and sixty eight cows and forty heifers last year. So we for the first few weeks, we just use all sex semen and the uh, highest DBI, highest fertility cows and heifers and things like that for the first two weeks. And then we used uh, Gene Ireland bulls for the last five or six days of that. Uh, uh, and then we switched to Angus then straight away after three weeks breeding. So we had all our Frisians in the first three weeks and then we we're straight into Angus then. A serious, um, serious change, isn't it? You seem to have got a good, a good strike with it too, around the 60% mark, was it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 58 and 62 depends on the bulls, but yeah, 60% uh, average, yeah. And you, Which you was, yeah, h- higher than we expected, like, so, you know, so we're you're happy. With it. You're an advocate of it after that, I'd say. Yeah, the exact same plan this year. Like, you know, it, it probably won't work as well, but if it isn't far off, we'd we'll be happy, like, you know. And it was sexed on the heifers and a few of the better cows sort of thing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, sexed on all the heifers, nearly all the heifers got sex semen. And then second, third, and fourth lactation, the highest DBI and highest fertility ones. The night the cows are our favourite cows, uh, yeah. and such. He wanted to and go and calf the first time anywhere. Yeah, exactly. And we didn't do too many of the first calvers because I felt they'd be under the most pressure. So I gave some of them Gene Ireland bulls and some of the better condition ones sex semen. But then, like, it all conception was good. Like, we didn't just put sex semen on everything and anything. Like, we were fairly picky and choosy about it. It's about it's fabulous going all together. And did you use a sync program on the heifer semen or anything like that? Yeah, the, just the, the simple one, the double shot PG, 11 days apart and things like that. And they were all served in over kind of two days. Yeah. And it worked. No, through, yeah. No kind of sim- Sorry? No collars or anything, Stephen. It's just... Oh, no, just simple straightforward tail paint. And okay. it's tail yeah, paint. Good. Yeah, it's it's I want to yeah. go back to Stephen a bit. I want to come on to the milk and then the grass. So tell us a bit about uh, the milk, first of all. How, how are they milking at the moment? Uh, they're doing about what they're doing. They're about 29, 30, they're just touching 30, 29, 30 litres at the moment. So they're doing 2.2, I'd say, kilos milk solids. They're a bit with it now the last few days. So 3.30 proteins. And what's the fats? So around the 4% mark? Yeah, 4.44, the last one was saying. Okay. And what kind of meal level are they on now? At 4, 4 kilos a meal, at 16%, because there's a bit of silage in things. Like that will drop back now, hopefully, next week when they're full time, hopefully. Yeah. Any trouble with cell counters? You're going okay? Uh, 41 at the moment, yeah. <clears throat> Gosh, that's not a problem at all. I just want to move on then a bit, just for a minute, and just tell us about the spring grazing this year. So you were spoiled in February. Did you graze much? Yeah, like we, we opened up with a, low, a lower cover than we'd like, I'd say, because yeah. the way that, like, so it was only 680, 700 when we started. Okay. And so we, we grazed as much as we could in February on the wetter ground because it was so dry. We grazed paddocks that we, we generally wouldn't be grazed in late March or early April. Yeah. And we got slurry out in them. But we still tried to stay to the so called the recommended targets as such. Okay. We didn't want didn't want to go too mad as such. Yeah. And, and any regrets about doing that? No, no, because if we did, we'd be starting the first round now as such in the last yeah. few days. Our yeah. second round it did uh, during the, these few days. And yeah. if it is where I'd say it'll be another five or six days before we start like. Yeah, just for everyone on the call here and uh, listen to us here, Stephen pretends he has wetland, but I don't think it's that way. Not that, not that ugly, anyway. So look, you're nearly out of the second round. We were having a chat there before we started, Stephen, and you have an idea about how you're going to transition from the, the overwintered grass to the spring grass. And what was the kind of the idea? What were your thoughts there? And why were your thoughts like that? Like there's, I'd say there's four or five days of, or six days maybe, of 18, 17, 1800 covers left. Yeah. And about 900,000 of the first few paddocks that were grazed. And rather than grazing out and just starting dropping from 1800 down to 1100 I'm going to do what the lads were saying earlier and just dip in and out for a few days and leave the first the second rotation paddocks fill up a small bit and transition to cows give the cows a better chance rather than going from strong strong heavier grass down to short leafy stuff and give their stomachs a chance to adjust to it so kind of three or four days all yeah 
growing yeah. grass, the winter growing grass could turn into eight days as you transition into the spring yeah. by giving it maybe a night and the other by day or something, is it? Yeah, exactly. And see how it goes. Uh, say I'll start, start that Monday or Tuesday and, you know, just kind of, because the, the first two or three paddocks are very good, but what's coming after that, if we get a cold week next week, the paddocks are coming after that, they'll just need an extra few days, like, you know, but if we do get a big burst of growth, we can easily just jump in and just keep going to the second round and leave a small bit at first if we have to. I think it's an interesting talk because actually it was something that John Douglas picked up on there a few minutes ago as well in his presentation. He was kind of saying the same thing about it maybe as an option for people. So there must be something in it. I've heard it two times now lately. Um, so, so Stephen, the cows are out kind of, kind of full time. They get a bit of silage or a bit of water beach or something like that from the rain, I suppose. Yeah. And um, how much fertility have you applied? Uh, two thirds of the platform has got slurry in January, some in January, some in February. Hmm. Uh, what was the response like to it? Excellent, yeah. yeah Excellent. Yeah. yeah, like you'd see any patches, there's a skip in the field, you'd notice the massive distance. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then the whole platform then is out to get 27 units of protected urea as well. So I'd say okay. we're at, I'd say 40 units. So okay. the, plan, the plan is to blanket spread the platform now with uh, 20, 28 or 30 units of protected urea as soon as the weather gets yeah. right up. And that's yeah. it. Just like, gets up. It might be next week. It's kind of feel a spring about it, hasn't it? The yeah. it's, it's almost ready to go, yeah. Uh, it is, yeah. And you were in this whole signpost farm program, your tier lawn, what we call monitor farm long ago. Um, but what actions are you going to take this year to maybe enhance your sustainability credentials? Uh, well, <laughs> I'd, I, 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 I'd say, well, I'd say we're going to put a paddock of um, uh, mixed species and another oh. six another six acres that we have some of that in and with three years and it's absolutely flying and the cows love it so oh. that's one drop back our nitrogen and just keep working on the clover we have clover in the farm with years and uh so I'll just keep work trusting the clover and things like that and cut back to mm-hmm. nitrogen a little bit and just it all depends on weather and things like that but there's two two kind of mains ones clover and the mixed species i'd say yeah, but on top of that then you're doing less i presume this um low emissions yeah. and, and you're also yeah. doing criteria so yeah, hundred. Yeah, yeah. All of them. It could go on a long way with those with those four actions on the farm. Then high EBI is sort of a herd and well well bred and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, in interior too. Work. Yeah. So rather than worrying about it, I think there are, there are terrific actions to be taken and moving on with. Come here. Um, if anyone has any questions, just pop them in there now. And if we're waiting for a question or two, maybe there aren't any going to come. I'd ask you one question. Tell us about your experience with the multi species because it kind of is flavour of the month. How good it is, I don't know. You know what? Are your, what are your thoughts? Oh, geez, we'd be had delighted with with ours, you know. Okay. Um, what did you Sorry. What did you put in? Oh, just one of the DFL seven. The seven varieties in it: there's chicory, plantain, red and white clover, timothy, and two other grass varieties. And it's oh. and it's good persistency in it. Like there's, you can still see like three seasons done, and you can still see a lot of leaf in it and things like that. Like so, the next year or two will tell a lot. But the clover and things like that, like it only got. I don't know, the 25 units of uh, uh, chemical nitrogen last year, and it still grew, one grew 12 and a half, and it grew 13 tons, like so. But it got 30 water after every grazing. Yeah. But we're, gra- we're, gra- yeah. We're, gra- we're grazing it every 17, 18 days, grazing it, light, light covers, and the cows are cleaning it out. So we did, we were delighted with it last year, enough. So you go, you go again anyway? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But like overall, it isn't a lot in the whole grand scheme of things like it's only a small percentage like and it's it's nice to have something different in it would you go 100% uh, yeah in time yeah, yeah, go going just to trust it more than anything you yeah. know what I mean like and persistency like if it's gone after four or five years it'll be a costly exercise to have yeah. the whole firm, you know? but like say after 10 or 15 percent of the fair minute that's 10 or 15 percent nitrogen you cannot spread or I'll spread it somewhere else you know right. what I mean exactly you know I'll give you a boost in other places yeah. Okay. What are your look at Stephen? There's no questions coming in on the call here now. So, what are your three top tips for? Oh, sorry, we're not finished yet. Go back to it. Breeding plans for 2023. So you're a big Angus fan, anyway, by the looks of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, plans for the common breeding season, though. Might, might ask you that. Yeah. Uh, so, sim- yeah. Similar to last year, I have 160 mm straws bought, and then we have some Jean Ireland uh, frozen straws as well. So I'll use them on, say, the higher EBI, EBI cows for us two or three weeks. 
Um, but start, we're going to start back to start. We're starting pre breeding now this weekend, so we'll have four or five weeks of pre breeding before we start breeding as such. And we'll fix any cow if there's what's what does pre breeding mean? It's just tail paint and write down the number, is it? Yeah, but, but no, we're not even write down the number. Ever, everything will be tail painted now this weekend, and twice or three times a week is all and the paint is completely gone and they'll get a different colour. And at the end of the three or four weeks, a couple of days before breeding, then we'll scan anything that's, or just check out any cow that's no tail paint gone off. Of, because majority of them should be over 40 days calf by the start of breeding now. Because we're saying we're, we're, we're about, we're just under 40 days away from breeding now. So there's only seven left to calf. You know, they should all, in theory. I'm sorry, um, then you six, saying, yeah. Yeah, go on. No, you were saying about the on the on the Angus side. You were saying it's, it's Angus you use as your beef breed here then as well. And you have your own beef enterprise. You're yeah. saying there's some difference between the bulls that are available, isn't that right? Yeah, huge. Yeah. Even the difference between stock bulls and AI bulls, like the we're trying to use high DBI Angus bulls, and like the difference is huge. You see it in the calves in the ground, like you can only pick out the AI, and like we generally try and buy as good an Angus bull as we bulls as we can. But you can see it just you can see the difference as clear as day, like as so calves. I, as calves, yeah, yeah. Like are they not are they not harder calf then if they're a can do a chunkier calf? No, they're not, no, 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 definitely easier because even one of the angles was like you can't trust him now. You have to watch him when he's yeah. calf and say as such. You, I trust the AI fellas more than I trust the stockpool fellas, like you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But yes. um so any cow that's that we don't like or has a lower EBI gets angus. And then after three weeks of AI, everything gets AI to Angus and we live off the Angus bulls then as well. Like so and we keep we rear all the Angus's then at the end yeah. next year. And they're killed about 21, 22 months of age, is it? Any anywhere between 19 and 21, they don't get the second winter. So we try and get them off grass and a bit of meal and things like that. And kind of October, November into December, they'd be finished then all of them. Yeah. Steers and heifers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah what yeah. kind of practices are they coming out at? Oh, they have to. Oh, they're 260, 270 uppers. You'd be trying to get 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 them to 500, 550 kilos, a little bit. And then at least you can make a few quid in them and things like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And try and get as much good grass in them as, as they did their own grass now. Don't want they've been in, they've been early on off grass more than the milking cows and silage ground. They're, they've had a good start now and they should kick on once they hit grass now full time next week. Should go fl- they'll fly at it. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Stephen, listen, thanks very much for that. Um, uh, leaving the call now, what are your two or three top tips for our farmer audience here t- today on the call? Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what, would you, what wouldn't you do without now at this stage? What are the two or three things you, you wouldn't do differently or you would do this coming season? You keep keeping it simple and straightforward is what, our, is what we can try and do. Keep it simple. Have one simple plan and stick to it. Don't overcomplicate it. It's like yeah. pick like with the AI and things like that and just have it simple and straightforward and do yep. do the rather than having a heap of small things dipping in and out just focus on what's working and that's what seems to work for us and I know it's working but it's what we're doing and you know that's the yeah. most part quick last question before we go Steve is question in for someone what's the cut off on EBI to get Angus in other words I know you're selecting your top cows yeah uh, the herd average is 212 so yeah. I'm here and now 190 200 depends on the cow and her solids. They, like you, you, you know, when when you're looking at the cow, you look at the uh, milk garden and things like that. But yeah. generally, the up gets black and white, and everything else brought in that gets uh, around, and, around the 200 mark, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with a few exceptions, with Maybe. a few exceptions, it depends on the personality of the cow and her dog, milk, and everything yeah. like that. You know, but generally, then you're getting freezers off cows that you like and cows that you can trust. Yeah, you know. perfect. That's a great answer. Hey, guys and ladies, thank you very much uh, for your attendance here today. And Stephen, thanks so much for uh, sharing your your uh, ideas on the on our webinar this morning. And uh, safe farming to everyone, including Stephen there and Richard. And the very best of luck. That's all for this week's bonus episode from the Let's Talk Dairy webinar series. And don't forget to look out for more bonus episodes each week. I'll be back with the usual Dairy Edge podcast on Monday, so do listen in then. I'm Stuart Childs and thanks for listening.